The Taliban's top leader, Mullah Abdul Ghani Baradar, has been captured by American and Pakistani intelligence teams. This arrest has been confirmed by unnamed US officials and two Taliban figures. Despite the Taliban not signing the Geneva Convention, the US has called in the NIA to question the prisoners without resorting to torture. Through this interrogation, they have discovered information about nuclear material being brought into the US. However, the cell involved is self-contained, making it difficult to contact them. Meanwhile, Analog, the southern field commander of the Ninja Empire, has been alerted to the sinking of a Coast Guard drug interdiction vessel off the coast of Texas. His aide, Time Particle, believes that this event is unusual and suspects that either a large amount of drugs or something more potent is being brought into the country. Analog suggests using their new satellite system which has super high definition video capabilities. Time Particle is impressed and asks if it has photos better than Google Earth. Analog explains that it can capture HD video of the entire Gulf and Southern region but the storage is reused after a few days due to the large amount of data. They decide to review the footage and discover that the Coast Guard vessel was sunk by two speedboats and the attackers are now fleeing at high speed. They fast forward the video to track the speedboats to their landing point. Analog requests oversight and control of the laser satellite, but it is currently on the other side of the world. Instead, he asks for a live stealth bomber, which is already in the region and under NIA control. Time Particle informs Analog that the attackers have reached the Texas shore and are loading something into a white van. They pinpoint the van and continue to follow it in real time with the help of Nihao, who grants them ultimate authority to proceed. The voiceover ends with Time Particle reporting that the attackers have entered Houston proper. Holy Christ, I need a hundred cement trucks. Alert Houston police pursuit, but have them stay back, slowing all traffic. The terrorists might get scared and detonate, and we're not quite ready yet. Redirect the stealth jet, highest priority. Have the counter-terrorism official at the next toll booth take a special reading on that van. Get me the US president. Meanwhile, ironically, at Capitol Hill, the politicians are again raising a fuss about the severe prisoner interrogation techniques. Sir, the van ran the toll booth, but we got a reading that the nuclear device is live and armed. Damn, that means they are approaching their target very soon. NASA? It would appear to be, evacuate the area to the east first, how's our jet doing? Com. They're in the area, having just pulled out of Mach 4, just about ready, here's a direct connection to the pilot. Pilot, the nuclear emergency has been verified, do not hit the van directly, the device is armed, blast some bunker buster holes just ahead of the van, such that it will plunge into one of them, execute at will, over, com. The cement trucks are on the way, General Rascal likes your plan. Have the police pursuit stop and block all lanes to stop all the traffic behind the van. The traffic ahead of it will be able to just move on in time. Com. I have the US President. Mr. President, NIA requests you to prepare for DEFCON 3, as we may very soon have a nuclear explosion within Houston city limits if we can't stop it. The President, will do, have been following. The stealth bomber bore down upon the speeding van like a giant bird of prey, blasting three holes in the freeway just in front of it, the van soon plunging into the first one. The jet sent a few missiles nearby, some of which caused some debris to partly fill the hole the van was in. Nuclear explosion? No, not yet. They were still three minutes from NASA, keep the area clear. We have an underground nuclear blast confirmed, low megatons, the wind is still out of the west, there's not much population there. Ah, good luck. Indeed? This should end some of those discussions in DC. Let's video backtrack those speedboats whence they came. Get on it! Rascal had had enough with the terrorists, the last straw being the nuclear attempt on NASA. He ordered all operatives to terminate all the suspects not in custody that they'd identified from observation and their insider's information. Lloyd looked stunned, for his subjectives were massed in the cauldron towns of Miran Shah and Mirali, the very epicenters of extremist activity, the ultimate boom towns of terror in Pakistan's belt of militants. He thought of renting a yacht for a sham of a party, but it wasn't their style. Alerting his insider, Lloyd dressed as a dervish, for he could otherwise hardly blend in, and awaited a special celebration, after services, 
in which he was to whip them into a frenzy of subjective hatred for anything non-Islamic. He had completed two slow whirls, the build-up to further acceleration, drawing all eyes wrapped upon him, turning ever faster on one leg. Out of his cloak came his submachine gun, it firing round and round as he twirled, his insider watching and taking care of trouble, the militant terrorists all falling dead, their dreams of virgins shattered. Enough is enough. 